So have you ever tried to uh, read instructions in Spanish? Um, like, yeah, I guess you didn't realize you were reading Spanish and you were just trying really hard to read it and understand what it said. That's pretty much what reading this um, instructions for this main harness in English is for me. If you can relate to that, you understand how this instructions, how they feel to me. So this is gonna suck. Here's what we got. So thankfully the harness is pretty uh, labeled and I guess there's not a million uh, plugs. You know, I guess if I can figure out one plug every single night, then we'll be done here in two or three weeks. So I guess that's a, a good news on the plugs. And then that's not including all the other stuff that is all jibber jabber to me. Um, certain things like the VVT plug will not get used because it's locked out. You know, like obviously I understand what a MAF is, mass airflow. Um, you know, and I understand what wideband O2. So, I mean, I know that that's your O2 sensor. You know, and then I did find the knock sensor plug. So it actually does plug into the factory harness that's down there. I'm about to show you all the car here in a second. Um, you know, the crank sensor. You know, I get that stuff like uh, CTS, CHT. I don't know what that is. Like, I'm going to have to Google it. Y'all probably know it. Y'all probably know exactly what it is. B1 intake cam. I know what that is. Uh, you know, I do understand that. Actually, no, this... Yes, this all goes, these three I do remember in instructions, they all go like back here. Fuel pressure, I, I don't even know. This just goes to a normal um, pressure sensor, I believe. Like this, just a normal pressure sensor, I believe. Uh, but that's probably going to be on my regulator that I've not purchased yet. So I'm definitely going to go ahead and be ordering a regulator. I guess I need to call tomorrow. I had one of y'all send me one on Facebook. But I just want to verify the uh, TPMS is always throttle position sensor, uh, four pin IAC. The IAC is going to be, what is that? Intake air. Then I'm stumped on the C. Mind blank. So you might have to Google that. Another IAC. So yeah, that's uh, things that are y'all's strong point that y'all sit here and oil pressure. Obviously, that's pretty basic. So some of this stuff is pretty basic, but the map sensor i don't remember what that is i think that's the one that i have to put on the firewall that gets vacuum off the intake fuel pressure um yeah y'all that understand this i idolize y'all i look up to y'all i wish that this was that simple for me because this is a big task so here's what the car looks like when it's basically broke down into what i call the service mode uh you can leave the grill on you can leave the front bumper on the grill is uh, sitting in place down here, so these corners are floppy, so you have to be careful. But you have two screws in the center, so it's not going nowhere. Bumper is pretty freaking sturdy. It's not really going nowhere. Yes, I'm out here in the loafers. It's a good thing about working at your house. Um, but, yeah, you can pull the fenders right off, and then you can literally, you know, come up here like this, saddle the tire, and, you know, you can literally just rest right here. Like, I mean, you can reach everything. Um, so that's kind of when I built this car, I do hate mechanic work on motors and I hate having to try to get to things that are in hard spots. So I'm real fast to cut something to make an access place or build it where it's simple like this. Um, the next step to this front end, if you wanted to, that you've seen in other videos is take your grill off real fast, uh, with two Phillips screws. Take your front bumper off a 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, throw that to the side. Um, undo these four bolts right here. And then two on the bottom of the radiator. Radiator will come out now. Undo what will be four bolts here, four bolts here. The whole top bar will be out of the way. Uh, overflow tank goes with the radiator out of the way. Undo two bolts on the bottom of the intercooler, intercooler's out of the way. Whole front end's wide open besides the motors there. So um, I, I have had this front end cut off three times to change things up and change the suspension and i am ready to cut it off again for the fourth time so i'm not scared to cut uh i'm like itching to cut this front end off again but i'm gonna keep my mouth shut because we are looking at some other stuff that's going to be coming up in another video but i'm not cutting it off i'm not cutting it off there's no plans to cut it off right now <laughs> 
Y'all are going to be jumping to conclusions. Um, I'm trying to get the car running. That's what we're focused on. But yeah, I mean, it's, you know, you can get to everything. So I'm going to try not to take this stuff off, not because it's hard, but just because I have limited garage space. So, you know, I don't want, uh, I mean, I can put stuff up top, you know, there and stuff, but I don't really want all of this crap laying in the garage. So it's, there's not much to do on the front of the motor. And if there is, there's a ton of room in the bottom, ton of room to get to the top. So I'm going to try to just leave this stuff on. But yeah, I figured I would just show y'all real fast. Um, you know, the, the car when it's broke down and how easy, how you can just stand right here and you're literally, you know, there's no straining. So you can see like you can just reach right here. I mean, you can literally just, you know, you can just lean right on it. Like this is, it's pretty easy. So, I mean, you can lean all the way over here. So it's not like, um, it's not like it's hard. Thankfully I built the car where it's uh, not as aggravating as a normal vehicle. So that's where I'm at right now, besides bummed out and really depressed because I don't want to do this at all. Um, I spoke with Turbo John. He said that he would help me wire, but um, my biggest thing for him, I'm, I don't like being a burden to anybody um, unless I'm paying them. And, you know, I'd rather just pay somebody really good money so that I can sleep at night knowing that you made really good money off of me and that I had not burdened you in no way, shape, or form. But this is the one that I would need the help on, is all of these where there's nothing on it. That's your inputs, outputs, and then whatever this crap is. And then the instructions were saying something about a power tap right here. Oh, man. This is a can plug. All right, I'm not going to ramble, but we're going to try to get through this. So I'm going to stop rambling. Um, I'm going to try to lay this thing out and kind of just get a feel for where it's going to break through the firewall. Um, it's going to break. Let's see here. Here's your coals and your injector plug. So they get plugged right in to there. The um, Like I talked about in the last comment video, the injector harness come right off with the actual... Um, intake so i did do that nicely while it's off i am going to go ahead and zip tie this probably around these legs so it's nice and firm but that whole unit just come right off and sit on there so i know on this thing i have your throttle position sensor and i swear i feel like this is an iat or an iac pretty sure this is an iat intake air temperature sensor i swear i feel like it is but i could be wrong i have to double check um, again, one thing I did find out is that this is not right. So I purchased that one because that's what the throttle body said that will work with it. And then when you get in this stupid main harness, it tells you right here, it's got a whole page dedicated to it, that that is wrong, that the IAC has been changed and this is the new part number. So this is the one that they're using now in this and that. Let's see here. I think something about if you're using the old one, you can rewire it or something. I don't want to rewire it. It's like $75 for that. So I need to go ahead and order that. That way, hopefully that's plug and play. I'm about to see if this will plug in where the I, let's see here. What was it? The IAC connector is on here. See if it will plug into the one I have. Let's see here. So right there, that might be what they're talking about. That's a two pin IAC and a four pin IAC. Maybe that's what they're talking about in here is that if, depending on which one you use is which pigtail you use, that might be what, I'm, what they're talking about. And then I bet they have tied them both together inside the harness in here so that you can use either one and that the one you don't use, you'll fold up and zip tie. So I'm about to check that. Maybe I can use my old one. See, that's the type of stuff I don't understand. So, all right, I'm going to stop rambling and I'm going to try to figure out some more of this stuff instead of boring y'all and figuring it out on camera. So let me go learn some Chinese and Spanish real fast. So there's basically a call. I'm not dealing with this crap. So we got us a nice hole. I really like that. So that's the inside of the car. So I'm very happy with that. That hole makes me happy because I don't like 
dealing with tight spots and tight stuff. So what I'm thinking is the harness is going to go through there. Everything's pretty much going to go through there. It's coming out here. And also don't like spending money. And if anybody from TKM is watching, look at that. I covered everything up, taped it shut so that I don't ruin your beautiful uh, masterpiece that you have built here. So everything's sealed up. But, um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of buying uh, bulkhead connectors and all of that fancy stuff so we of course have a hole here already drilled through the firewall to get to the transmission bolts and remember in another video we built the patch panel that will bolt on from the inside with the rubber seal to seal that back off um same thing with this so i left enough meat down here to connect something through basically we're going to build us a square piece so up here you know you have all the way around it i centered it you have a flange all the way around it that goes right here a flange on a firewall a nice flat flange only thing across the bottom there's nothing right there so we're going to put a piece of foam across the bottom and we're going to build us basically a square aluminum patch panel and then we'll probably drill some holes here where nut certs um in so and then in our patch panel that's where we'll basically probably um they can cut a slot out of it like this so that it basically slips on like a U over it. And then you have another piece that goes over the bottom um, that matches the cutout. So it's really tight around the wire, like really, you know, close with the rubber garment around it. Uh, that way, I don't want to put a rubber garment here in case fire or something happens. Uh, but so it'll be a two piece panel that goes over here. Basically one big panel that's really tight and then one that slips up to the bottom of the wire so that um, everything is sealed up. I just, if you don't understand what I'm saying, I'll just have to show it to you when I build it. I can see it in my head and I know it'll work. Uh, I just have to build it and then show y'all what you're talking about. But then what that allows is anything I need to add to it. I can simply just unbolt that panel and modify that panel or recreate that panel as long as all the pass-throughs are within that big hole. So that hole is like four inches almost three and five eighths i think it was three and three quarters um so you know i have tons of room to modify another panel so that i'm not basically modifying the firewall firewall don't have to be messed with no more and i do have enough room up top right above that right here in this indention okay that you could go and put something else in if you wanted to if you needed more pastor room so everything's gonna go through right here that way it's behind the intake and we'll have a two-piece um, access panel patch piece that will go over that to hide everything. Um, it would be pretty cool if I ever had the engine back out again, I will be building probably a carbon panel that goes like all the way, like one big piece right here to cover up your, uh, you know, where your heater core and all that went through the firewall. I built that patch panel in an earlier video, but I would redo one big piece now that I know that, uh, you know, this, and then I have two rubber plugs, like right there, you know, and I could catch it all with one big piece that was not inserted in. But we're not going to do that right now. We're trying to get the car running. Tons of room. I'm going to use our rubber, our edge protector that we used in the back for the burn down tubes to pass through. Um, I showed y'all in the burn down tubes video how to put the edge protector on like that, uh, you know, using a lighter and everything to form it. So I'm going to go ahead and put that rubber around there so no wires catch on that edge. Um, and then go ahead and throw the harness through there, plug it into ECU. I've got to take the passenger seat back out, plug in the ECU so I can start just laying it in finally. And then I'll have to vacuum my mess up and everything tomorrow. I just kind of want to get it laid in there before it gets so, too late. This is the harness just laid in here, drooped all over. Okay. Right here at this branch off, this is going to be your O2. Okay. Um, now I guess your O2 could be easily extended but the issue is here is that after the o2 here comes the injector and the cool harness pretty much which gets plugged in literally right here in the valley right where this is at um and then everything else you know starts has plenty of tons of freaking lead but the well technically this could go up in here a little bit more let's see here so let's push this up in here max just for just for sake of conversation because we can run them harnesses technically on the inside of the car okay and then that is going to be the map which would be fine so about right there 
and then this would be your um, O2. So if, if this didn't reach your exhaust, then you could simply just extend your O2 side or build an extension. So that'd be pretty easy. But that's about as far as it can come in here. Now, when we go in here, let's turn on the light. Come in here. Here's our harness. All right. And there is our dominator. So that's my options is to bring the harness this way and you know extend the o2 because i mean look now the o2 is all the way in here which actually you know what it can come in here will go out underneath the car and i'll have to look in instructions and see which side they say put it on i think they preferred the passenger side which would be freaking amazing um but then it just leads all these extra uh plugs tucked up right here which are still easy to get to the seat pretty much covers a lot of it up um you know everything would be pretty much crammed under the console but yeah it's gonna have to be like that if i want to tuck it so because i think i can get these plugs in and shaped around um, but now the more i'm thinking this out loud as we discuss all this and i did check the iac okay that is correct. So this is your four pin IAC, let me make sure I'm getting this right. Four pin IAC. And then what I did was I folded this wire over. This is your two pin IAC. And then I just zip tied it back here where the knock sensor plugs in, which this is your knock sensor plug. Your knock sensors are right here. So all of this is working out beautifully. And then this would go up to your throttle body, which is beautiful. The only problem I have is my TPMS is completely wrong. Uh, the plug is not the same. The one that the instructions, I think from Holly for the throttle body said that I could use is this little round one. Let's see here, it looks like that. So it's a little round guy and it has, I try to see in here, what is that, three prongs? Yeah, so it has three prongs in it and it's round. So I don't know what plug the Holly has on it. Um, that what's what throttle position sensor that this one's this has three also but it's more oval or more square more rectangle you know not a circle so i gotta figure that out but I'm, i'd rather not rewire this plug because i suck at wiring i'd rather literally buy another sensor and put that other one on ebay so i'm not too worried about that i just gotta figure out which one it is so I figure i'll just update y'all that real fast about the location of the harness uh let's see here if we can read through these instructions the oxygen sensor uses a shielded jacket, blah, blah, blah. This will correspond to the AFR left. So left is actually going to be your driver. Reading in the software, so it would make sense to connect this to the left oxygen sensor. If you're running a dominator and want to run two oxygen sensors, then you need to get the adapter. Um, not end of the world. I'm fine with that. So I think we're definitely going to pull this harness. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to pull this oxygen sensor on harness into the car that's going to be one less thing in the engine bay also which i'm cool with that 100 percent. and this is your map sensor i believe the map sensor is this thing yes okay so map sensor y'all i hope y'all like how i learned this right on camera with y'all if y'all don't like this and you want me to cut this crap out then just let me know so your map sensor yeah, it's gonna mount on something and then it gets a vacuum. Okay, so that's cool. So what I can do is we can also throw the map sensor inside the car. Okay, so this is working out actually pretty good when you start thinking about it. So we just got rid of two more wires from under the hood. Okay, because we wanna get rid of as much stuff under here as we can and I'd rather have it in the car than under the hood because I hate working around a motor. Um, so now what we could do is we can come in here with our, let's see here, our wide band. We can probably just go over to that side and drill a hole somewhere and get that to go down under the car. So let's place that over here because I think that's going to be our best bet. Or maybe we'll just even make the connection inside the car. Maybe we will build a extension. I'm sure I can actually order an extension and not even have to build it. Um, so that my connection comes in the car and then my map sensor now i'm thinking put it on the carbon piece right there and then all i have to do is run a vacuum line inside the car to it 
Um, that way that's all in the car. And I believe a bulk fitting for a vacuum port should be pretty cheap. And there's enough holes. No, actually, I already have a rubber garment right here. So this works perfect. So I could put a little X in here, poke a rubber hose through it, come right here and mount the map sensor in here and plug it in right there. Uh, of course, we'll lay this harness under the burn down tubes, but I'm just kind of getting everything laid out. And this is the thought process I'm going through. All of this stuff be beautiful and easy to hide in the car. I'd rather have as much electrical in the car as I can versus under the freaking hood. Um, like I said, it looks better and I don't want to work on it. So there's a couple more thoughts. So I'm going to just go through now and read the rest of these, figure out what they are. I know I got a ground to take care of that has to go to a head. That's probably going to be a wrap for this video. I've been watching the time, time on the screen up here and we're doing 10 minutes, seven minute, five minute conversations. So, um, that's probably gonna wrap that up, but I know y'all are gonna probably drop all kinds of comments, help me out, because y'all are absolutely amazing. I absolutely have the best um, followers on the page that I could possibly ask for. I told Randy the other night, I was bragging on y'all. I told Randy that starting this channel has been a blessing and that I absolutely have the world's best followers that I couldn't ask for any better friends that I have met through this YouTube stuff now um, that are willing to just help me out. So it's it's just, I, you don't know how thankful I am. So that's why any of y'all comment. I don't ignore nobody or if anybody hips me up, I try to help everybody any way that I can help, um, you know, with what I actually know. So yeah, that's gonna be a wrap for tonight. So I'm gonna do a couple things off camera and then I'll catch back up with y'all in the next video. So like, comment, subscribe, share, and I appreciate everything y'all do for me. And I look forward to talking to y'all in the comments. Thanks y'all.